the difference between really creating a prognosis and people who may believe that they have better control over the prognosis of a course of injury than, than we actually do. If that makes sense. Um, so there's certain things that you can accomplish with the nervous system <clears throat> that can lead, yield immediate results. But my question when people do demonstrations like this is, even though you can yield an immediate result, how, last, how long lasting is that result that you get? <clears throat> so for example, when you go <clears throat> to seminars and the, they do what I call the, like the front guru demonstration of the technique, you'll, want, you'll notice that I don't do any of those demonstrations because of the thing I first said yesterday, which was the way the human body works and the way the tissues respond, it's in such a way that no single input can ever lead to a lasting change. And if you look at literature from a bird's eye perspective, that is abundantly clear that you can't cause a, a lasting structural change in the human body in any tissue you choose with a single input. It always takes multiple inputs over a period of time. Now, when somebody, when I, when I say that, there's always somebody thinking or saying, or going to say, what about the nervous system? You can do amazing things with the nervous system. To that, I always respond that the nervous system is, is easily temporarily trickable. So you can trick the nervous system into providing results, but you can also trick yourself into thinking that those results are long lasting. Okay. So I'll give, you, I'll give you an example. So if you want to come up and, and lie on your back. So let's say that people do leg tests. So we grab someone's leg, we bring the leg up as high as it goes. Just relax there. So let's say that he's able to get to that extent, to that degree. Now somebody pick a random area on the body and just call it out. Pinky toe. <laughs> so pinky toe on which leg? That's that. Okay, so the leg that I'm not working. Correct. So if I go and play with his pinky toe, and then I bring that leg back up. Does everyone see the difference uh, in what just happened? Can you not teach me that? <laughs> okay, so what happened here? The question is what happened here? Can I get someone else up here? So what, what's exactly going on when someone puts on a demonstration like that? And I, of course, just to preface this, this is not to say that all of the temporary neurological things that occur are useless. Because, like we were talking about here, if I can provide going back, a temporary neurological trick that can increase range of motion, as long as you understand that you have to immediately start training that new range of motion, as long as you keep that in mind, then it's fine. Then you can use as many neurological tricks as you want. But the problem is when you think that those neurological tricks are long-lasting. So let me pick a different area. Shoulder. Shoulder. Of who in the room? <laughs> of him? Oh, okay, oh, no, no, no. Oh, bad. Oh, okay. Okay. Here. So now if I come back here and I go back to the same person, his leg is going to go further. Now why does that happen? It happens because I just did it to his leg. So you have a short-term neurological learning effect, you have a short-term potentiation. Because whatever you're doing at any given moment, your brain is getting better at doing it. Does that make sense? Now, whether or not it's lasting, that's a completely different story. And that's where people fail to see what's occurring when you do a demonstration, which is why I can't do demonstrations. Same thing if he told me that he had lateral elbow pain. Now, if someone has lateral elbow pain, it really doesn't matter what the cause of the lateral elbow pain is. If I take my hands and I pat the lateral elbow pain for long enough, or I rub the lateral elbow pain for long enough, or I release quote, the lateral elbow pain for long enough, and then I ask him, how are you feeling? What's he going to say? Better. He's going to say better. Now, put someone at the front of a room with, you know, a whole bunch of people watching, for sure he's going to say better. What's he going to say? Doesn't feel any better? We're just going to spend all day doing the same thing? He's going to say it feels better because people are watching. And there's a lot of ways this happens. Now, think about, for example, when you buy one of those Q-ray bracelets. Does everyone remember what a Q-ray bracelet is? Those, those, there's like a, a bracelet you put on that's supposed to magically align your, I don't know, just does something amazing. Right. Think of the way that people sell Q-ray bracelets. They get people to stand up. Stand up for me. They'll say, put your hands out like this. 
together with your feet together, put them together here, out here. They'll push down on them and they'll get them to, to lean forward, like to fall forward. Then they put the Q-ray bracelet on and then they push them down again and they realize that they're strong. But of course they're strong. It didn't matter what you did because I've already taught the nervous system to temporarily do something that I'm challenging it on. So as soon as you challenge the nervous system to do something, it's gonna get better at it immediately. But just by basic human neurology and physiology, there's a difference between a short-term potentiated trick and a long-term potentiated actual change, okay? The same thing goes with something like a leg length inequality. Which, okay, so you're gonna tell everyone which leg is longer. The right leg. Okay, the right leg's longer, and now you're gonna give me a pit area on the bottom. Here, right here. Is right here. Okay, so everything's lined up again. Now, you're gonna give me a different area on the body. Left glute. Left glute. So that could say, right leg's longer. Right leg's longer again. Okay, so we, we messed up. We, we have to refix it. Do you see, but do you see, you see that, you see the, what I'm trying to get at here? What I'm trying to get at is, it doesn't matter what you can accomplish temporarily. What matters is, do you train it? And Every other example of human physiology, everyone knows this to be true. Who's a trainer in the room? Who trains clients? Okay, do any of your clients get stronger by lifting a weight once? Why? Why don't they get stronger? There's no physiological explanation as to why someone would get stronger for lifting a weight once. Just like there's no physiological explanation why any of this uh, stuff that I'm demonstrating will actually last. However, having said that, if you have these tricks that can, you know, all of a sudden increase the range of motion, if you train the range of motion, then physiology would say that it would actually get better long term. But you've got to be very careful with what your outcome measures are and making sure your outcome measures mean something. Because these outcome measures are, are not sustainable. 